Good morning. And what we're going to talk about today on Exodus 34, 7. And this is a particular scripture the Lord gave me a little while ago. And he kept laying on my heart, laying on my heart, and just... I mean, just too much information, but there's been a lot of activity in my life with doctors and health and haven't been able to get to it. And the Lord said, you're going to get to it. Not going to go any further till you do it. So 34 7, Exodus. I have up on the screen if you got the video. Keeping mercy for thousands. Amen. Forgiving iniquity and transgression of sin. Amen. That will by no means clear the guilty. Now, here's what we want to look at. This is the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. And upon the children's children. And unto the third and fourth generation. Now, here's a, a, a part of scripture that says, <coughs> God is going to a challenge and attack and visit sin. From a father to a child to the grandchild to the great grandchild to the great grandchild to the great great grandchild. Let's look at Deuteronomy. And there are some people out there, well, the Bible can't predict. Oh, okay. Let's see. Deuteronomy 24 16. The father shall not be put to death for the children. That's good. My children are not going to suffer capital punishment for me. Neither shall the children be put to death for the father. If a child commits a sin worthy of death, it's not going to be passed on to the father. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. And there are sins throughout the law, and there are sins today in governments that in the violation of that law, the penalty is death. Now, there's supposed to be in America, there is throughout places in the world and in the Bible, if a man kills another man, that man's blood must be shed. That man must be put to death. Very few in America are put to death, but that's not our, that's not our subject. Let me not get off on the trail. So, if one of my children commit a sin and a crime worthy of being put to death by the Bible or by the laws of the state. And they can't find my child. He runs over that. They can't come to me and say, okay, you, you're going to die to death of your, of your child. Now, if I commit a sin or a crime against the government worthy of death, my children can rest assured, at least by the states of the King James Bible, there will be no capital punishment. For my crimes and sin upon them. Now see, there, there's no contradiction. One is is a capital punishment, a form for a crime or for sin. And the other place in Exodus is there's iniquity from the father to the son. And God didn't say he was going to kill him. He said, I'm just going to pass on judgment. I'm going to visit the iniquity of the father and the son and the son and the grandchildren. But when we go back to Exodus 20. We see a greater part of Exodus 34. And we're going to start in Exodus 
20, verse 3. Right here, if you can see it on the screen. Now let's look at Exodus 20, verse 3. Down to verse 6. Now this is going to attack a religion or religion. And this will attack will be the aids of worship. And when you look at a Catholic Ten Commandments, you're not going to see the commandment we're reading right now. What they have done is they have erased off the Catholic Ten Commandments what we're going to read. And they've taken commandment number 10 and broken it into two. Slick. Well, that's not what we're talking about, but it's what we're talking about. There is something that the Catholic Church is hiding, but let's read what we're and go what we're going. Verse 3. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Now, many, many, even Christians have other gods before God. Children, spouse, house, cars, sports, television, job, hobbies, material, people, places. A vacation could be a god before God. And that's a sin. When you raise something above, you know, you know, the Lord's coming, the rapture's coming. Oh, but Lord God, please, you know, I got a wedding coming. We got, a, 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 we're, we're going to go to a Mickey Rat Land. We're going to go on a cruise. And you put that above God. Thou shalt not. There's the Ten Commandments. Make unto thee a graven image, meaning like Mary. Jesus on the cross, rosary, crucifixion, statues, images, pictures, portraits. Now, what I'm going to say, listen, you are looking at a man who for 17 years was a Roman Catholic, Polish Roman Catholic. Member of St. Mary's Star to Sea Roman Catholic Church in New London, Connecticut. When my grandpa was a member of that church, he provided services for that church. At times, he was an usher of the church. Thank God he's equal. Well, he's gone home to glory. He got saved. He got out of that, got to a Baptist church, served the Lord, and is in glory today. Faithful given to that church. On April 25th, 1987, I came out of that Catholic Church and I came into Jesus. I know what they taught. I know what happened in the church. I know what goes on behind the church, the Catholic Church. Many, many preachers and pastors and, and uh, Sunday school teachers get up and oh, the big, nasty, mean Catholic Church. And they've never even been inside of a Catholic Church. I have. I've partaken of, this, of the sacrament. I burnt the candle. Went to the confession. Took home the palm leaf. The ashes on the floor. I went through all that mess. And as a little boy, I'd be sitting in that pew. And i look at all the statues all around. And there were many in St. Mary's. And the stained glass windows of the apostles and all that mess. And I, I would look above the altar where the, where the priest was, and, and there's Jesus on the cross. And it always amazed me, the Catholic Church, my testimony to Catholic Church is, all right, the Catholic Church teaching, Easter. Easter is Catholic and paganism does not belong in a Baptist church. It's a sin. Easter is a sin, as star. But Catholic Church, they would teach Easter. Easter and Christmas were the two Pagan holidays of the Catholic Church, where actually my, my entire family would go. My mom and my, my aunt would actually go to church. Grandpa and I, we went to church every Saturday night. I 
I had an aunt that was a Catholic. She had the, the, on the entire wall of her den, Jesus with his heart sticking out, and on a mantle, on a mantle, a, a statue of Mary, the bust of Mary. And the Catholic candies and the house smelt like Catholic and all that. Okay, don't tell me. My family was Polish. My grandparents who came over to America through Ellis Island, Polish, went to a Polish Catholic church in New London, Connecticut. And I have an idea where that church is. I, I can't think of it right now, but I, where, if it is, where it's still going, I don't know. Okay? I am told in the history of my family that my grandparents, my grandpa, my great-grandpa, the family, made moonshine booze. Got the corn and all that for the church. I thought it was funny that in my in my grandparents' house in New London, Connecticut, during Prohibition, my family was involved in making moonshine whiskey. Grandpa told me that. Some of it went to the church. And I won't tell you where it is. It was another place that it would went to, but that's not what we're talking about. Don't, I'm trying to tell you. When I'm talking about what I'm talking about is I know what I'm talking about because I live what I'm talking about. Okay? I, I, my, I don't know if my aunt's in heaven. I think my aunt was de more dedicated to the church than she was to Jesus. I have an uncle. And he went to St. Joseph. And I don't know where he stands. Or stood. I knew where my grandpa stood. You know my grandpa was saved. Under the blood of the Lord Jesus. And he stayed in the Catholic Church for a while. Because because the, the, the power of the church to grip on him. Finally he was shown through the Bible. And got out of that mess. Thou shalt not make. Unto thee any graven image or any like as anything that's in heaven above, a dove. That a dove is a famous Baptist sin. You go to dove. Or an eagle. The nationality of America. And the worship of, of patriotic Baptist Christian. Or it's the earth beneath. Words, worms, <laughs> or that is in the waters under the earth. You mean the Christian fish symbol that Christians have? God said, Don't make no fish symbol. Oh, it's Christian, it means Jesus. No, it is a sin. Uh, be ye fishers of men. The fish is a symbol of Satan, the reptilian class of. Cherubims that is not in heaven, Revelation, that is the falling creature, the dragon, the serpent. In actuality, a fish is a symbol of a lost man, never of Christianity, never of Jesus. Jesus is called the shepherd of the sheep, never the fish. And a complete study under what the waters of the earth and not to make an image is enough to say that your fish symbol is a sin. And you need to repent. And I can go on further, but that's not the study. But that fish symbol is a symbol of Satan, never of Jesus. But we'll move on. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Catholics do that. Nor serve them. Catholics do that. Catholics will have Mary in their yard, somewhere in their yard. And they will clean Mary. And they will wash Mary. And they'll uptight Mary. They'll make sure that all around Mary is clean. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Look at that. Some people say jealousy is a sin. Are you saying God's sin? You didn't read about the offering over there in the law about a man who became jealous of his wife because he thinks he may have stepped out on it, have you? And God never rebuked him. Now, too much jealousy. 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. There we go. Unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Whoa, that's a... No, 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 hate, 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 no hate, no. Erase the hate. God says... If you were involved in imagery, idolatry, if you're involved in the church that worships that mess, if you bow down before that mess, you hate God. A person that is in the Catholic Church that gets involved with the worship of the idols and the rosary and, and the figurines and the dollies and the candles and all the other mess. You hate God. There it is. Oh, you know the Easter bunny and the Easter eggs? You hate God. The Easter basket, you hate God. The Easter lilies, you hate God. That's all imagery idolatry. It's in the Easter basket, Easter lilies, and the palm leaves, and, and, and the basket, and the bunny. And all. Isn't that things on the earth, in the earth, and under the earth? You hate God. And even if you're a Baptist, you listen, the new word I came up with, Baptist Catholic. It's where a Baptist church has the Catholic things inside of it. And I've got a lot of people to say, amen, that's, a, that's good. And the preachers and pastors and the Christians that don't like that are involved in that. And the reason why they hate that is because I kicked them. Uh, Christmas. You know, Jesus in the manger, the wise men, and 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 the uh, and, uh, shepherds, and and Santa Claus, and the gifts, and and the major scene, and and you hate God. You know, eros and the heart, and Valentine's, and the chocolate. And all, you hate God. You got it. You understand. Well, we got to get a new Bible and take Exodus 20, verse 5. Just take it right out like the Catholics do. That's why the Catholics take that verse out. Because the Catholics, according to the Scriptures, what they do and what they practice, you hate God. The Pope hates God. The Cardinals hate God. The nuns hate God. The priests hate God. That priest will, will take it and he'll kiss that. I forget what, I forget what the names are. When he does the last rites, he takes that, that ribbon that goes around his neck and he kisses it. Now I've got pictures, or I can get pictures, of priests kissing the feet of idols. There are people that worship the Pope. They think the Pope is God. They think the Pope, and they, they kiss his hand and they, and they bow down. You hate God. And show mercy unto thousands of them that hate me, keeping my command. All right, so let's take the aspect of Exodus 34, 7, Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 24. Now, what is an iniquity of fathers upon the children in third and fourth generation that we read about in Exodus 34? I'll tell you plain and simple. I told you, my great-grandparents came over. They didn't come over from Poland. They came over from another country. They came to Ellis Island to New London, Connecticut. And when they came to Connecticut, they got into a Polish Catholic church. They, I don't think they ever spoke any English. I'm not going to give names. And they had two sons and a daughter. And they raised their children. Their two sons, my two, my my aunt, my uncle, and my grandpa, they raised to be Catholic. They did the Catholic thing. Now my aunt didn't she she remained single, never had any children. She's she's died. I hope she's not in hell. I don't know. But I think she was more. More to the church than she was to Jesus. I have an uncle who had children, was married, and brought them up in the church. So you see, here's a father, and he has a son, and he brought him to the church, and their, and their grandchildren are now in the Catholic church. My grandpa 
had two daughters, and brought them up in the Catholic Church. Now, I can't say much for my uncle because I don't know much about my his children and what they did as far as church. I, I don't know. But my great-grandparents, Polish Catholic Church, brought my grandpa up in a church, and he went to the St. Mary's Star of the Sea, New London, Connecticut Church, and brought his daughters up. And his daughters fell away from it. But one of, one of his daughters had two sons. And one, I don't know, uh, the other one, my brother, I don't, didn't go. But I went. So grandpa brought up my grandpa. My great grandpa brought up my grandpa. And now his grand, great granddaughter, and now his great great grandson, I hope I said that, are now in a Catholic church. Though my mom fell away. But my mom would come Easter and, and Christmas. My mom, though my dad was not Catholic, were married outside the altar of the Catholic Church. And I can show you pictures. I can show you pictures of my mom and dad, my grandparents, outside of the St. Mary's Star of the Sea Catholic Church in New London, Connecticut. So, me... My mom, my grandpa, and my great-grandpa. I don't know about my great-great-grandpa. So, fathers upon their children. Great-grandpa Pucus, and uh, forgive me because I, I get confused with, with the relation. Great-grandpa Pucus brought upon Grandpa Pucus Upon his daughter, Pucus, who married to become a Hayward, onto Stiley Hayward in the Catholic Church. From a Polish Catholic Church to St. Mary's, Star of the Sea, and also there was St. Joseph's, which was also New London. They went to two different churches. So you see what, what the aspect is the pause upon the children to the third and fourth generation is the fact is I'm speaking about what I know. I went to school I went to school and I, I took a writing class on how to write. And I remember the instructor telling me, he says, you write what you know. And then later on he taught the class, if you're going to write about something you, you don't know, you better study up on, on the words and tech and all, but the first thing he taught the class, you write what you know. I'm going to speak of what I, I don't know about the Anglican church. I don't know about the congregational church. I don't know about that. I know about the Catholic church. And I know in the Catholic church, there are families on to, there's, a, there's, there's parents that bring their children up in the Catholic church. And their children bring up the grandchildren of the Catholic Church. And the grandchildren have children bring up the great-grandchildren that go to the Catholic Church. And I know the great-grandchildren bring up the great-great-grandchildren up in the Catholic Church. And the great-great-great-grandchildren bring up the great-great-grandchildren of the grandchildren of the grandparents of the parents are all involved in well, the Catholic Church. Again, I don't know about the congregation. I don't know about the Episcopal Church. I can go all the way back from the Catholic to, to Great Grandpa Pucus. There's what that verse means. Now let me tell you what happened. Stiley Hayward went to the to St. Mary's Star to see Catholic Church. Uh, I believe the, the, the priest, I'm not going to say father, because the Bible says it's called, it was Fontaine. And after a while, when I when I left St. Mary's, and I, you know I grew up in, I would go to St. Joseph's. 
because it was nearby. But on April 25th, 1987, I went to Calvary and I met Jesus Christ and I got saved. Okay? I stepped out of the Catholic Church. I stepped into to the Church of Jesus Christ. I started going to the Baptist Church. And, and listen, today the Baptist Church is no better than the Catholic Church. Now, you don't like it. It's Listen. Maybe you never, maybe because you don't you have not been in the Catholic Church to see that the Catholic Church has influenced the Baptist Church. But so Stanley Hayward got saved. He's born again. He's outside of religion. Stanley Hayward meets Lisa Rissaw. Lisa Rissaw, her parents, her mother was Catholic, never went to church. Uh, that she died, I don't believe she's in heaven. Listen, dedicated Catholics don't go to church. But, all right, her mother was a Catholic. Her father was Episcopal, but never went to church either. Okay, so Lisa never really had a religious church life. So, so Stalin and Lisa meet, and on November 2nd, 1991, they marry in a Baptist church. Lisa was saved in 1991. She asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be, to be her Savior. I was present there. She became a born-again Christian as I was a born-again Christian. We never, ever set foot in a Catholic church. Never. We were invited to Catholic weddings. We were invited to uh, Catholic funerals. I said, we're not going. Lisa respected me. Lisa respected that it was a foul, wicked church. And she said, okay, we're not going to go. I had a wife that respected the Bible. I had a wife that understood the Bible. I had a wife that believed the Bible. And I had a wife that honored her husband. I know a lot of Baptist Christian pastors and 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 church folks that wives are not so. Okay, God gave me a godly wife. That's why I miss her. So Lisa and Stiley had two children. We had Henry. We named that for my grandpa. And we had Rachel Ann which her name means first advent, church age, and the second advent. We brought our children up in the Baptist church. Both our children are saved. I was baptized after I was saved. Lisa was baptized after she was saved. We were baptized in the same spot, different years. Uh, accidentally not knowing, not realizing my son was baptized twice because daddy can't remember nothing. But my son was baptized in Ledger, Connecticut, and both my children were baptized in Port Orange, Florida. I, it, I didn't even, I forgot all about that too. I saw the pictures. The day that I stepped out of the Catholic Church and stepped into Jesus, April 25th, 1987. Not any of my children, I don't expect if I ever have any grandchildren, have stepped into the Catholic Church. Now, I don't know about my great-grandpa. I know about my grandpa. He's in glory. My grandpa stepped out of the Catholic Church and stepped into a Baptist church. But the fathers upon the children upon the third and fourth generation. Great grandpa brought his child or children to the Catholic Church. At least one of them, because like I said, I don't know about my uncle, but at least one of them children brought his children to the Catholic Church and they fell away, except for Easter and Christmas. But that's Catholic. 
And his children brought their children, me, to the Catholic Church. There it is. So my great-grandpa Pukas will be charged for the iniquity of Stiley Haver going to the Catholic Church. My grandpa will be charged with iniquity for bringing his daughter and Stiley Hayward to church. My parents will be charged with iniquity for allowing my grandpa to bring me to the Catholic Church. Now, forgiving iniquity. Now, I can't speak about great grandpa Pukas. Now, if by chance, if great grandpa Pukas ever got saved, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember if he was around when I was when I was living. But let's say great grandpa Pukas got saved. Then God would erase the iniquity of bringing his children to Catholic Church because Jesus Christ forgives from all sins. Now my grandpa Pukas, we believe was saved in the Catholic Church. I mean, he believed Jesus. He didn't believe in the church. He believed in Jesus. But we believe that he rededicated his life and gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, then God has erased the iniquity of him bringing his daughter and his daughter bringing her son to Catholic Church. My dad never got saved. My, God, my dad never had anything to do with Jesus. I believe he died lost, and I believe he's in hell today. He will be charged allowing his son to go to the Catholic Church. And his wife. My mother. Now, my mom, we'll skip over her for a moment. For a reason. Stiley got saved April 25th. Of 1987. Lisa, his wife, got saved, I forget, I think it was June in 1991. I think it's June. I'll have to check. We never brought our children up in the Catholic Church. We brought them up in a church that God honored through the blood of Jesus Christ. We, I will never not be charged with iniquity of passing to my grandchildren, my children and my grandchildren, the sins of the church. Again, whether it be Catholic, Congregational, I don't know, Anglin, however they do it. That charge, that sin will not be placed upon me. Now, under the blood of Jesus Christ, if Grandpa Pukas got saved, well, I don't see it. I know Grandpa Pukas got saved, and God forgave him. So the iniquity of bringing his children and, and grandchildren, and not ever his great-grandchildren, because we're saved. The iniquity of the Catholic Church does not pass under my grandpa no more. Now me, it'll never be there because I'm never going to bring up my children in the Catholic Church. And where the congregation, again, I don't know what the other churches do. I know what the Catholic Church. I know families grow up in the Catholic Church. More so in Mexico and the third world nations. Man, your family, you're Catholic, you're always Catholic. The Spanish. So what about my mom? You say you left off your mom. In 2009, my mom trusted Jesus Christ as her Savior. My mom has been saved since 2009. Well, guess what? The charges of her son going to the Catholic Church, they've been erased by the blood of Jesus Christ. So let's look at this verse again. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. I am the Lord thy God, and the jealous God. This is iniquity. All right, let, let's let's take the church. This is the sins of the Catholic Church upon the fathers, upon the children. The fathers brought their children up in the Catholic Church. Their children bring up the third to the Catholic Church. The fourth, their children bring up the grandchildren in the church of them that hate me. In actuality of the Catholic Church against God and Jesus Christ. That family hates God and Jesus Christ. But if you get right, you believe on the Lord Jesus, you get right, you get saved. Showing mercy. 
of the thousand of them that love me and keep my command. What's the commandment today? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. There it is. Uh, let's run back to Exodus 34. 34, 7. Keep in mercy for thousands. Forgiving the iniquity and transgressions of sin. That, okay. You have believed today. You have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You are saved. You realize on April 25th, 1987 for Stiley Hayward. From September 6, 1968, the day I was born. I believe it was a Friday. To April 25th, 1987, which was a Saturday. All my sins of 18 years. And there were plenty of them. All the sins. Are under the blood of Jesus Christ. That you realize. All my years in the Catholic Church. God says I don't see it no more. It's under the blood. All the lies I told mom and dad. It's under the blood. All the times I made my mother cry. It's under the blood. Those nights when I had no ability or anything like that, and at three o'clock in the morning, I would just cry to cry to make my mom wake wake me up, wake up and come and take care of me. That was a sin. Honor thy mother, father means if, if there's no need, you're not got poopy, you ain't got pee pee, you're not feeling if you just you stay asleep and let mom and dad sleep. All the cookies I stole. All in the blood of Jesus Christ. I, 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 was, thinking, I was thinking about this the other night. It's so funny. My aunt and uncle were married when I was, when I was a little boy. I was their little flower boy. No, ring bearer. Sorry, ring bearer. And I remembered... I remember my mom made a wedding cake for my aunt. And I remember the day before the wedding, I remember my mom saying, leave the cake alone. Don't touch the cake, Stiley. I remember little Stiley Hayward. I forget how old I was. I remember little Stiley Hayward getting up in the middle of the night taking his fingers with the icing going right across that cake. I disobeyed mom. I remember the stories. They had to take the cake and churn it because Stiley disobeyed his mom. All under the blood of Jesus Christ. All of it. All under the blood. 2009 when my mom got saved. Going all the way back to her birth. All her sins have been washed away. Including all the times she went to Catholic Church, including the times she said, "All right, take take Stiley to the Catholic Church." All under the blood of Jesus Christ. Not so from my dad, as far as I know. Where at Papukas, he got saved. Now we again, we believe he got saved in the, so we don't really know what date, but he rededicated his life. But all the times since whenever he received the Lord Jesus Christ, going all the way back to his birth, all his times in the Catholic Church. And even when he rededicated his life, are under the blood of Jesus Christ. The time that he would make whiskey and make bootleg uh, alcohol during Prohibition, all under the blood of Jesus Christ. And some of the stories he told me growing up, all under the blood of Jesus Christ. No Catholicism charged a grandpa, mom, or me. Now, I don't know about great-grandpa Pucus. But if he wasn't saved, if he's in hell today, he is charged with the charge of bringing his children, grandpa bringing his daughter, and his daughter bringing his son. Even though we're under the blood, even though we're saved, even though we got out of that, if great grandpa Pucas never got saved, the sin of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, to the third and fourth 
generation by me is look it says there by no there will be no yeah there will be there will can't get the word by that will by no means clear the guilty if great great grandpa puke is never trusted never believed on the lord jesus christ he is guilty this is an iniquity of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children, unto the first, third and fourth generation. And it's sad to believe that the, in, in the Pucus family, there, there's, a, there's a Roman Catholicism. And if there has been no salvation in the blood of Jesus Christ, there will be the charge of that father upon the children, upon the grandchildren, upon the great-grandchildren, upon the great-great-grandchildren, and as far as Stiley Hayward and Cheryl Hayward and Henry Pucus, working backwards, we won't be charged with iniquity of the father upon the children upon the children because Grandpa, though he brought his children and grandchildren to the church, the Catholic, he's been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Cheryl Hayward. Though she allowed her child to go to the Catholic Church, she has been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That won't be charged to her. Stiley Hayward never brought his children in the Catholic Church. There will be no charge there. Now let me show you a remarkable verse, then we're done. 1 John 1 9. Down here in the bottom. If we confess our sins, whatever those sins be, Catholic Church, fornication, adultery, murder, lying, theft, whatever it be, He, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I know for Henry Pucus, I know for Cheryl Hayward, and I know for Stiley Hayward, Catholic Church is under the blood of Jesus. You say, what about Rachel and Henry? There was no Catholic Church there. I think if the Lord tarries, I think this will apply to the Baptist Church. Because the Baptist Church is turning Catholic. And I, did, I probably lost a lot of audience before, but I probably made somebody mad who's staying this long. But really, look at, look at it truthfully. I posted a few weeks ago a Baptist Church that had a signboard. Come to our Good Friday. I believe in my heart any church, Baptist or whatever, has Valentine's Day, has Easter, has Good Friday, has Palm Sunday, has Christmas, and has any of that other nonsense is a Baptist Catholic church. Thank you. Have a good day.